Hello, my name is Suzanne Fitzpatrick. I'm Director of the Institute for Social Policy, Housing and Equalities Research at Harry Watt University in Edinburgh. I've been asked to do this short video uh, about the implications of COVID and economic lockdown um, on homeless people and on homelessness policy from a UK perspective. I plan to talk mainly about England uh, because myself and colleagues are currently in the field just now doing key informant interviews with high level stakeholders across England about the implications of COVID and the lockdown uh, for the people that they, they work with. We're interviewing people from central government, from local government uh, and from charities. And so I want to draw out some of the key themes that are emerging from those, those interviews and from some of the other work that we're doing as part of the Homelessness Monitor England report that, that we do for crisis um, every year. Uh, there's really three areas that I want to, to draw out. First of all, what seems to have gone well in terms of the emergency response um, with respect to homelessness. Secondly, what are the key challenges that are faced right now and as we move towards the exit strategy. And third, what might we hope for by way of, of longer term shifts in housing and homelessness policy as a result of the COVID experience. So what has gone well? Well, I think, first of all, the clarity and directness of that communication that came out from central government, from MHCLG at the end of March, uh, via Louise Casey, telling local authorities, instructing local authorities, that really anyone who was sleeping rough, um, anyone who was in congregate style shelter accommodation, was to be moved to a safe place to self-contained accommodation by that weekend. Um, that was an uh, instruction that was, that was welcomed uh, very much in its clarity and its directness. Local government was looking for that lead um, from central government and appreciated very much getting it. And it seems that there really has been a remarkable effort across the country by local authorities uh, to get everyone in, or at least to make sure everyone has um, a decent uh, offer of self-contained accommodation. Some local authorities have found it easier than others. Um, some have got um, greater access to um, hotel accommodation, other forms of self-contained accommodation, others struggled uh, more for that. Those that have got um, better developed um, multi-sectoral uh, partnerships and relationships, particularly with health colleagues, uh, found it um, easier than others. Some have got more capacity than others, particularly some of the smaller authorities seem to have really struggled. So, you know, the overarching message there is central government put out a message and local government in general actually reacted incredibly uh, swiftly and effectively um, to that. So that's a real positive. I think another positive that has to be um, foregrounded is that it does seem that the rate of infection uh, amongst people in hostels and other homeless populations has been kept really quite low. Um, so not can't be certain exactly what the percentage is, but people are talking around 3%, which is very different from the situation in, in the United States, uh, for example. So it does seem that, that that triaging system has been really pretty effective, including in some of the areas of, of real concentration, uh, like London. Um, more generally, people have said that another positive is the, the, the closeness of the relationship that has been that has been built or enhanced uh, with public health colleagues and with local NHS colleagues, at least uh, in some areas. So that's been a really big uh, positive uh, that's come out of the crisis um, so far. Um, clearly what's been hugely welcomed um, are the changes in, in benefits and from a homelessness perspective, particularly the increase in the local housing allowance rate to cover the bottom 30th percentile uh, of eligible rents has been hugely uh, important. So there's you know, a, a range of things there um, that people are reporting where um, changes brought about by central government policy and by local government response to those policies um, that have really made a difference um, in the midst of the crisis. Um, another area um, which people were very keen to uh, emphasise as being a positive was the no eviction or the halt and evictions policy that again came out very quickly and seems to have been particularly impactful with respect to family homelessness that we're hearing has been kept to a pretty low level and um, really seems to be suppressed during the crisis which of course has been hugely helpful. 
So clearly there have been a lot of challenges in implementing um, help for homeless people in this emergency uh, situation. Those challenges have, have, have varied um, between different places. But what we were hearing really across the board um, from key stakeholders in different parts of the country is concern now uh, about what they view as being mixed messages coming out of central government, coming out of MHCLG. It's no longer clear that there's going to be full cost recovery um, for local authorities who are accommodating a lot of people who they wouldn't normally have a duty uh, to accommodate. That's a particular concern around the uh, No Recourse to Public Funds group and the EEA migrants who don't have access to the housing uh, benefit system. Um, it's just really not clear um, how their um, accommodation costs are going to be uh, met um, going forward. Um, and I would say that local authorities and others really seem very anxious, almost panicked about what's going to happen uh, to that group. More generally, um, there's clearly widespread um, concern about what's going to happen in the step down uh, phase. The idea of turfing hundreds or thousands of people, vulnerable people, out onto the streets is clearly a, a scenario that nobody wants to contemplate, but it really isn't clear at the moment how that step down accommodation is going to be paid for, far less the, the care and support uh, revenue costs um, for, for the vulnerable people with, with more complex needs um, who form quite a substantial part of that, of that population. Um, one of the things I've been quite surprised about um, in doing this work over the last couple of weeks is the extent to which shared forms of accommodation are still being used even during the crisis. So while shared dormitory type accommodation shelters have been closed, there are still appear to be a lot of hostels and shared accommodation that's being used where people are sharing kitchens and bathrooms uh, and so on. So that clearly is raising issues around social distancing uh, and protecting people's, uh, protecting people's health. Looking forward um, more towards the exit strategy uh, phase of things, um, there's a lot of anxiety around a potential spike in family homelessness um, with uh, once, particularly once of course, the, the, the ban on evictions uh, comes to an end if that's not extended further uh, and you know, looking at the prospect of really a major economic um, recession, depression, um, with uh, all the implications that that will have for increased levels of debt, rent arrears, uh, unemployment and so on. One specific issue that's coming through is the extent to which resources, local authority, homeless and services resources have been pulled away from more preventative type interventions that they've been engaged in under the Homeless Reduction Act towards obviously the, the crisis response uh, during COVID and that may well have implications as well for this, this potential spike uh, in family homelessness. Finally, what kind of longer term shifts in housing and homelessness policy might we want to see as a result of the experience of, of the COVID crisis? Well, there's a whole range of these, but three that I would pick out for just now uh, are these. First of all, I would really hope that this experience of this crisis and the public health um, style intervention uh, that we've seen would help propel us away from uh, the use of congregate forms of provision, particularly larger scale, um, lightly supported um, forms of accommodation for homeless people which we've long known um, are very unpopular with homeless people, places where they don't feel safe. Um, and now with the COVID crisis, we can see uh, the, the very sort of acute health um, implications of placing large numbers of vulnerable people in these congregate settings. I really hope that this is the, the, the prompt that we need to shift decisively in the direction of a, of a housing first model um, of accommodation as default for homeless people with complex needs uh, so that they can live in ordinary housing in ordinary communities uh, in self-contained settings with the support that they need. So that would be my first hope for the future. My second, which is closely related, is that we um, can start to reconceptualise the uh, support needs that particularly vulnerable rough sleepers and other uh, vulnerable homeless people have is really 
social care needs, health and social care needs. These are not predominantly housing or homelessness issues, they're effectively social care issues. Um, and hope that that closer relationship between health and homelessness we've seen during the crisis uh, can be maintained uh, and people um, who are vulnerable who are on the streets or in shelters and hostels and so on can be properly assessed by their health and social care needs uh, going forward. The third um, thing I would hope to see is a recognition of the importance of central government really taking a grip of, of a issues like social issues like homelessness and uh, taking full responsibility uh, for tackling it, not just in the context of a public health emergency like COVID, um, but in the long term. In England over the last 10 years, uh, we've seen uh, a shift towards a, a localist uh, policy, which uh, to my mind at least saw uh, central government really abdicate its responsibility for some of the most vulnerable uh, and some of the poorest citizens in the country. I would hope that the um, importance and the effectiveness of central government really taking the lead during the COVID crisis is something that we could see embedded uh, longer term so that we don't go back um, to the failed localist approach that's seen um, homelessness rise so significantly across England in recent years. I look forward to seeing everybody for further discussion on Thursday.